everyone welcome to the tristar gym channel today's episode i'm narrating a video i posted a few months ago uh bjj versus wrestling and i got a lot of uh requests asking me to narrate this video so that's what i'm going to be doing in this episode i'm going to be narrating my role here with johnny yates johnny yates comes from an olympic wrestling family he is son of five-time olympian doug yates and brother of Dory Yates is also an Olympian. Now, Johnny is a two-time Pan American champion. He's got a whole bunch of wrestling titles as well on top of that. And he's also an Olympic hopeful. He mainly trains in Greco-Roman wrestling. He does also uh, freestyle wrestling. However, he is mainly a Greco-Roman wrestler. And uh, here's a few highlights of our role. We did two five-minute rounds together. And uh, I'm going to be starting round one very shortly. Here's just a few highlights for the introduction. Johnny was a uh, nice enough sport, very gracious to come on the jiu-jitsu match and roll with me and let me film it. And the purpose of this video is really just to basically highlight the differences between jiu-jitsu and wrestling. Now, they're both great grappling arts. They're both incredible uh, uh, grappling arts. In my opinion, blending the two together is the ultimate. Uh, however, when you have a pure wrestler versus a jiu-jitsu guy, you get a lot of weird exchanges. You know, you see a lot of things that you wouldn't see uh, between a wrestler and a wrestler, of course, and a jiu-jitsu guy versus a, another jiu-jitsu guy. When you have wrestling against jiu-jitsu, you get these weird exchanges, and I just thought it's very, it would maybe make for a very, very interesting video. So with that said, here's round number one. Let's see some of those exchanges and uh, just have fun with this video and see what are the typical uh, differences between wrestling and jiu-jitsu. So here's me playing on my back here. Of course, wrestlers don't play on their back, so Johnny's not used to being inside the guard very often. Here's me kind of working a limp leg, trying to hip heist, and I'm for sure looking for leg locks. You know, Johnny's, I've never seen them. He doesn't really know how to defend them, obviously. And uh, the, re the main reason why I go for leg locks against wrestlers is because you can't really sprawl against the leg lock. When you sprawl against the leg lock, you're making things worse. So here's me shooting underneath. There's Johnny kind of uh, with a partial sprawl here. And that just feeds the leg lock right into uh, right, right into the game here, right into my guard. So I'm not only looking to sweep Johnny with butterfly hooks and take his back with underhooks or whatnot. I'm also looking, looking to spin underneath him and go for those leg locks. Why? When a wrestler sprawls, in my opinion, the strongest counter is to spin underneath with a leg lock. It works beautifully. It works quite often. Here's me with a whizzer. There's me shooting underneath. Again, Johnny Sprawl is just going to feed the leg lock right under my arm. It's not going to help. And that's why I really always focus on uh, leg locks, not just heel hooks, also foot locks or toe holds or knee bars. They work really, really well against wrestlers. Um, it's just for their reactions. I I I get more leg locks against wrestlers than I do on on BJJ practitioners. Number one, of course, BJJ practitioners are more aware of how to defend those leg locks. But GJ, BJJ practitioners don't sprawl as often. You know, wrestlers are trained to sprawl, and when you sprawl, you straighten out your leg, and when you straighten out your leg, and you put your weight on top of me, it just makes it really easy for me to wrap up that ankle. All right, so here's me framing. Johnny attempted an underhook pass. Here's me hip heisting. He's grabbing my leg. I love when a wrestler grabs my leg. I have kimuras. I have guillotines. And of course, I can spin underneath here and heel hook. Now, Johnny's wearing a boot. It's going to make the heel hook you know, almost unfair. It's just going to be too easy for me to hook it. And uh, that inverted heel hook, especially when I'm also facing upside down, is just a very, very powerful heel hook. Just very, very difficult to stop. I'm going to let Johnny on top again one more time here. Let's see what happens. I'm playing open guard this time. Here's a wizard again. I'm going to try probably not to uh, roll for another leg lock because things might get boring. There's Johnny picking me up and me flowing right into a pendulum sweep, right into a butterfly guard sweep. All right, so let's take a quick look at that again here. I'm going to replay that. This is a little rewind. Okay, so let's see what happened here. So I'm in my wizard again, and again, I love this position against wrestlers because I can flow into leg locks. This time I elected not to flow into another leg lock, just to kind of mix it up a bit. I'm going to try to put him in a guillotine. As I put him in a guillotine, he's a very strong boy. Believe me, Johnny's inhumanly strong. He's going to pick me up here. I'm going to let this play through. As he picks me up, I've missed the guillotine. He's going to bring me down, and I'm going to go right into a pendulum sweep. Now, I really like to use pendulum sweep to off-balance my opponents. I don't, I do not always get it. That's the second pendulum sweep I try. That's the second miss. Johnny drives forward. There's that butterfly hook sweep. And that was just, you know, kind of like uh, flowing with the momentum, you know, kind of flowing with the go here. Johnny was pressing forward, and that butterfly hook sweep just kind of threw him a little bit more forward than he wanted to go. 
Now I'm in mount. He's body locking me. Okay, now obviously this is not the traditional jiu-jitsu escape. This is a, a Greco-Roman reaction. You know, they love to body lock. And uh, when that's occurring, what I like to do is I like to go to a combat base. So there's combat base here. I have one knee up, one knee down. I'm going to frame into his neck. And you can see here, when I frame into his neck, that's going to break his body lock. Okay, so watch here. I'm just going to rewind this just a little bit. And uh, you, you can see that Johnny's got a very strong body lock here. Okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to frame in his in his on his head here. I'm going to push him down. Okay, I'm going to push him down in this direction. And then I'm just going to drive my body up with just by posturing. You're going to see that. It's real simple here. I'm going to push his head down. I'm going to posture. That's going to break his grip. Even though he's got an incredibly uh, strong grip, uh, nobody can withstand that, that frame and posture from the mount position. It's just too much leverage. I got too much leverage here. I'm using my legs. I'm in combat base. I'm going to cross face here, probably flow into armbar or triangle. If he's pushing into me, I'm going to go into armbar. There it is. And uh, just a basic jujitsu, of course, you know, because Johnny's a Greco-Roman guy. If we were standing up here and he can lock his hands around me, he could throw me. Believe me, Johnny has thrown me many times uh, on the mats. But now we're in my world here. I was in mount. I got all the chips on my side, so I'm going to be able to float to an armbar. Okay, now we're starting standing up, and I don't have any wrestling boots on me, so it's going to be very hard for me to shoot. There's a beautiful body lock. Uh, by Johnny, I'm going to roll into a Granby here, Granby roll, find that leg lock again. There's that heel hook, a north-south heel hook here. Those, those are the most ferocious heel hooks you can get when the, I'm heel hooking somebody and his knees are on the mat and I'm in that north-south position. That's just, in my opinion, the strongest position to finish a heel hook in. It's just very hard to defend. Okay, we're back standing up. Now, Johnny's got wrestling boots on, and this is very late into practice. The mat, you guys might not be able to tell, but this is an August, uh, this is a summer month here. This is August, I believe. And for those of you who don't know, Quebec is extremely humid in August, extremely humid. The mats are very slippery. It's going to be hard for either one of us to shoot. Johnny's got a good advantage here. He's uh, got boots on, but he knows. He knows if he shoots on me, he knows I got that guillotine. He knows, uh, he's, he's seen me roll many times. He knows I'm a guillotiner. He knows I have the kimura waiting. He knows I have the leg locks waiting. So he's going to be very careful uh, before he shoots. There's going to be some pummeling here. I don't remember exactly how we get back down to the mats, but I believe it's going to be uh, happening very shortly. So again, this is very, very late into practice. Okay, that was the end of round one. So there was no takedown here. We're going to take, we took a short one minute break and this is round two. This is our second five minute round. Johnny elected to take off his boots. If you guys notice, he took off his shoes. He was getting a, a little bit tired of getting leg locks. So he thought it would give him an advantage to take off those boots, maybe make it harder for me to heel hook him. And now we're going to be pummeling. And I think we're pummeling for, for quite a bit of time here because again, it's super slippery, very late into practice. Me and him have, have been rolling with other people for, we've been training now for well over an hour and we decided to lock horns at the end of practice. And uh, things are just super slippery. Very hard to shoot on this mat. Just super, super hard. So I'm just going to fast forward here till the first takedown occurs. I don't remember exactly how it occurs here. This is me fast forwarding. There are a few failed attempts from both of us. Just a super slippery situation. And eventually, I think I eventually pull guard here. I think this is it. Johnny's got an underhook here. It looks like I'm going to pull guard. Snap down attempt. Beautiful snap down attempt here by Johnny. I brush him off here. Arm drag attempt by me. Okay, I think I'm going to have to fast forward here a little bit. Lots of pummeling going on in round two. And we're going to hit the ground very shortly. And then the action is going to resume. All right, there it is. There's the first sumigashi. Okay, so here we go. I got a wizard. He's got the underhook. I'm fighting with my head here. I'm going to pull guard. I'm going to go straight into sumigashi here. Classic judo maneuver here. And I'm going to flow into another heel hook. Now his knee's slipping out. I'm probably going to reap that, pull that back in. Very important to pull that heel, that knee back in. There's that heel hook. It's just this, these north-south heel hooks are very, very hard to escape. Now, even if Johnny was a leg lock expert, I really think that was just, you know, a difficult one to escape. All right, we're going to be starting back in the guard because that was just too much pummeling, too long. And uh, here's Johnny back in the guard. Now, of course, if uh, we're in Johnny's world right now, I'd be pinned. I would have lost this match. So Johnny's not used to being in this position. Although I have seen him crush uh, purple belts, brown belts in practice. Like, I mean, Johnny, don't don't uh, kid yourself. Johnny's been training 
grappling and jiu excuse me, uh, wrestling and parterre, as they say. Uh, here's a up and coming uh, uh, omoplata. A lot of you asked me to comment on this. You know, asked me to break it down. That's just basically a regard into omoplata. You know, it's not a move I rehearse. It's just uh, you know from years of training regard. And from years of doing omoplata, you kind of just bl blend the two together. There's a little omoplata finish. Uh, back, but back to what I was saying. You know, wrestlers are great standing up. Obviously, of course, their their whole sport is based on on taking a, another person down to the ground. However, they also do parterre, which means uh, literally in French, it means on the ground. Okay, now parterre, they do grappling on the ground. Not the same as jujitsu. Very different. However, um, they have their system, you know, of turning somebody, pinning them, controlling them on the ground. And I find it to be very effective, you know, because I've seen Johnny really just crush uh, purple belts and brown belts. Yesterday I saw him rolling with a brown belt uh, in practice, and he was just crushing this brown belt, just completely crushing him. Um, not because he knows, and, and that was in jiu-jitsu practice. Not because he's such a jiu-jitsu expert, but because he's been grappling for so many more years. Uh, Johnny's, like I said, his father's an Olympian. He's been grappling and, and wrestling since he can walk. You know, so um, me and Johnny, actually, we go way back. When I used to train, I still train with his father, Doug Yates, five-time Olympian. And uh, Johnny was just a young kid on the mats, you know. Uh, he used to come and watch us wrestle and kind of just play. He was probably like seven or eight, you know, didn't have any wrestling partners. He would come in and just kind of like uh, watch me and his dad and a bunch of other wrestlers kind of practice all night. And now here I am with Johnny, just wrestling with him, practicing with him, uh, grappling with him. It's kind of a, a little bit unreal to, for me to be thinking that, you know, like 10 years ago, Johnny was just a little kid, you know, just a young little little kid uh, on the mats watching me and his dad train and wrestle and roll. I know I missed a few exchanges, guys. I'm going to rewind it. Let me rewind it here. I missed a few nice exchanges. Okay, we're back standing up. Uh, none of us are shooting the legs here. None of us. It's way too slippery. Let's see what happens here. I think I pull guard again. Here comes a guard pull. There it is. I'm shooting into a guard pull. A little Gary Tone in action there. Here's me pulling into sumigeshi. I miss a sumigeshi. And here's a shoulder lock. A lot of you asked me about this maneuver. I'll be, I'm going to be doing a, a butterfly guard video in the near future. And I will for sure highlight this maneuver. It's a great maneuver. I'm essentially locking in his shoulder. I don't know if you can see this, but I have a gable grip going on here. I have a gable grip. And uh, I'm basically going to either try to armbar him. And if he resists my armbar, I'm going to sweep him. It's a, it's a really, really nice combination. So as... As Johnny was kind of driving forward into me here, a lot of wrestlers will try to f drive you forward and try to flatten you out. He was just really going in the direction of the sweep. So I just kind of flowed with it here. And I'm going to lift uh, my butterfly hooks up. And you can see that's going to elevate both his knees off the mat. It's a very, very powerful sweep. And it's going to allow me mount position. There's me again in uh, combat base. I believe I'm going to flow into combat base here. There it is. I'm going to push down. I'm going to frame. I'm going to push down. That's going to break his grip. And uh, from here, I'm probably going to float to armbar, or uh, I believe I failed the armbar. Yes, that's right. I went to armbar. Here comes the guillotine. And now, look, we're back in the same situation. Now I have the neck wrapped. If I can bend his neck, the match should be over. If Johnny can po posture out of this, the match, uh, maybe he'll, uh, he'll escape. But now the neck is completely bent. And whenever the head is down and the hips come up, you guys are going to see the hips come up shortly. There it is. Now the hips are coming up. It's over. Okay, I'm going to get the tap here. Johnny taps, and that was the end of our second round. All right, and uh, and then up with the guillotine. Very common, you know, wrestlers shoot, grapplers grab, go for guillotine. I want to give a very special thank you to Johnny. Johnny was a great sport. You know, his sport is not jiu-jitsu, uh, but he uh, was more than willing to come and lock horns and let me film it. And just, you know, kind of watch these two great sports, how they clash with one another. You know, just how they clash with one another. It makes for some... Very, very interesting exchanges, and um, ultimately speaking, the best is to blend both these arts. You know, I spend a lot of times uh, rolling with the and getting thrown by the wrestlers. You know, when I go on their mat and I train with them, um, I've been training many, many years in both wrestling and jujitsu. Um, but believe me, uh, if Johnny gets a hold of me, he would throw me. Like if he if he got to his body locks, I know the grips that if he gets to them, I'm in tons and tons of trouble. So you see that when we're standing up, I'm just completely avoiding his grips. I'm doing every everything I can not to give him his grips. And if he does get to his grips, I'm going to roll into a leg lock or I'm going to flow into some kind of jiu-jitsu attack. I'm going to take him out of his world because if we go into his world, it's going to be a, a long night for me. So uh, I want to give a very special thank you to, the, to uh, Johnny again. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next episode. Thank you.